So today we solved systems by graphing and you have to know how to graph by hand because you will be assessed for that way. Also, just in general, you need to know how to graph by hand as a foundational skill and the rest of your math topics. So specifically, we're looking at systems of linear equations. What format are linear equations in? Okay. That is giving you all the information you need to graph. What did, what can you clearly see when it's in slope intercept form? Which is your B. And what else can you see really clearly? And that's all you need to graph. So if it's not in slope intercept form, I mean, we're only looking at linear systems, get it into slope intercept form by isolating the Y. And then the single number is always your y-intercept. The number in front of the x is always your slope. You always plot what first? The y-intercept. The y and then you use your slope, your rise over run, to plot your next point. So that is a super important skill. That is why instead of your usual practice that is online, that is why your practice is on paper. So that's what you would need to get done. It should be at 80% or higher because they do provide you with the chance to look at the key. So you should be checking that they're accurate as you go. Um, but you need to have 80% of it done at least to get the full points for today. Um, at the last 20 minutes or so, I'll come around and check and then I'll take any requests that you'd like to see on the screen for that practice. But this is probably like the most direct lesson I've ever taught you. Like instead of making you explore a whole bunch, like all the other lessons, you are just being told step by step what to do. So now it's just a matter of applying those steps. Can you rearrange it into slope in your set form? Can you plot your y intercept? Can you use your slope? If you can't, it's your data asks because it only it only gets tougher from here. So you need to know how to graph. Questions, comments, concerns? Yes. So if it was something like this, what is my slope class? The slope is always what's in front of the x, not the x itself. So what's in front of the X if it's not written? And slope is a fraction. So if it's not written as one, make it one by it over one. So if it's that, then my slope is one over one. Make sense? Okay. Any other questions? All right. Um, so then you know what you're working on. I encourage you if you do finish early to um work on your study guides like the test will be here before you know it to make sure you have all the pages you need for your binder time like start getting that those types of things ready um, or resubmit something for more points you could always do that too but you know, do that lesson 12 number four if you want to follow along diego is thinking of two positive numbers he says, if you triple the first number and double the second, the sum is 34, let X be the first number and Y be the second. Which equation represents it? So this is really good um, practice for word problems. The translating expressions, and we will do this again in lesson 17. We'll just focus on word problems in 17. But they want the first number to be X. When we're tripling x, what math are we doing? Multiplication by three, right? So doing x. And then we're doubling the second number. They want the second number to be y. Then I double the second number. What math is that? When I double the second number, what math is that? So times y. Oh, their sum, so the sum of triple of x and double of y, the sum means add. 
is means equals 34. Okay, so that should be one of these. And it is perfect. So double and triple would imply multiplication by specific numbers. So that one works. If you don't need help with this one, I just need you to be quiet, okay? So what is a possible pair of numbers that he could be thinking of? You need to look at the options and see which one this plugged in make it true. So let's try where X is two and Y is 14. So I'm plugging in, we're gonna see if this makes it through. What's three times two? What is two times 14? What's 28 plus six? Is it 34? Yes. So if it is true, then it can be a solution. I think that's it. I don't think I need to try the other one. If I did though, I'd get 12 plus 20, which is not 34. So it has to be the first pair. Now it says, Diego then says, if we take half of the first number, what variable was for the first number? <laughs> so it says, if you take half of the first number, what variable is for the first number? Okay, so we're taking half of x. You could do it as one half times x or x divided by two, same difference. Um, but if we take half of the first number and double the second, what are we calling the second number? Their sum, I kind of assume their sum, is 14. Could this equation 12x plus 4y equal 14 represent this? I'd say no. I don't think I could even make this into that. So I'd say no. <laughs> Boys in the corner and stop talking. So true or false, Diego's two numbers are eight and five, which is shown by the intersection of the graphs of the two equations. So let's see, these would both have to be graphed. Today we really focus on converting it into slope intercept form, which is a skill you need. I mean, you need to be able to graph that by hand, but if this were me on a test and knowing what I know, I would probably use Desmos to confirm that answer. So that's what I'm gonna check. So the hard part is knowing whether or not your equations are correct. I think mine are correct, so let's see. Three x plus two y. Okay. Um. So let's see if it matches up. I mean, it looks pretty good to me. Um. The y intercept is at seventeen. Does this look like it's at a seventeen? Yep. Um. It intersects at eight five. Let's see if that matches up, and it does. Okay. Stop talking. Separate if you need to. You shouldn't be just copying that. Like you really should only be looking at it to see if your answer is right. Didn't think I had to say that. You guys know that cheating on homework doesn't like improve your grade that much, right? It's how you do on tests. Okay, anyway, this y-intercept is at seven. So looking at all those things, I could even look at the slope to be 100% sure, but it already looks good to me. So I would say... Yes, this graph shows it. And eight five is where they intersect. So where it says the two numbers are eight and five, I would say that that is true. So questions on that. Okay, other questions, other things we'd like to see at all. Cadence on 
Okay, so number five on lesson 12. We have the table shows the volume of water in a tank after it's been filled to a certain height. Which equation could represent the volume of water in cubic inches when the height is h inches? So let's see. You'd have to, if it works for the equation, then it should be when I plug in the height, I get the volume. Okay, so that's how I'm going to go about this. I think that would be easiest. Seeing if I plug it in, if I get this as an answer. So if I plug in zero, it does equal zero for this first one. But for the next row, does one equal 1 1.05? And those of you that asked the question, answer me at least. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'm plugging it into these equations and seeing if they're true. So if I'm plugging in my first ordered pair, zero for the H, zero for the volume, that's true. But then when I plug in the next pair, is this true? So then don't pick that one. Now try the next one. When I plug in zero for the H and zero for the V, so I'm plugging in this first ordered pair, is zero divided by four is zero? Use a calculator if you need to, zero divided by four. Yeah. Okay, so that works so far. Um, now let me try plugging in this one. So then one for the H, 1.05 for the volume. I'm going to, I don't think that's going to be accurate, but let me just see. 1.05 divided by four is not one. So we're also not picking the second one. For the third one, it looks like we have H squared plus 0 0.05. I'm going to skip the zero, zero, just because there's lots of like intricacies with that one. I'm just going to go straight into the second one. So if I plug in one for the H, and I plug in 1.05 for the volume, let's see if we get something that's true. What's one squared? What's one plus 1.05? One plus 1.05, which is not equal to 1.05, right? So then my process of elimination, then it would probably have to be this one. Um, but if it does work, then I should be able to plug all of these in to this and get the volume it says. So I'm going to split screen and I'm going to try that right now. So 1.05 times all the H's cubed like that. That is the same volume. 1.05 times one cubed. So, so far it's matching up. When I change it to a two, matching up, change it to a three. So if that's the equation we're going with, it needs to work for each input output pair. That to me is easier than trying to come up with the equation from scratch is just trying them out and see if they work. Questions on this one? Okay, questions on others. Could be from any practice, any paper, anything. Go, go ahead. Okay. Okay, so one from the paper, hopefully this helps. In order to graph by hand, what form does it need to be in? And are both of these equations in that form for number one? Yeah. Yes, so that makes it easy. I don't have to do any scratch work. All I have to do is graph starting with the one. The information you need for graphing. 
A slope and y intercept. What do I graph first? The y intercept. And for the top equation is what? So find that on your y axis. The coordinate plane is number lines that intersect each other. As you go up higher, the numbers get bigger. So going below the zero, the origin is my negative one. All right, and then you use your slope, your rise over your run to plot your next points. So my rise is a positive two from my y-intercept. I'm going up one, two, and my run is three. Again, go up two, three to the right. All right, and do it enough to where you can make a straight line. I don't know where it's going to intersect, but you want to have a straight line. Now to graph the other one, also in slope intercept form, what's my y intercept? So I'm going to graph that. And what's my slope for that one? And it's not one, it's negative one over one. So I need to go from my y-intercept down one to the right one. Your run is always to the right. Unless you're working backwards, like plotting points to this side, your run is always to the right. And your rise depends on if it is positive or negative. Once you see where they intersect, you can kind of stop and identify your solution. What is my solution for this one? What coordinate is this? Okay, I counted three for the X, one, two, three, right? And then one for the Y. That, when I plug it in for my X and Y, should make both of these true. I mean, you could check it that way if you want, or you could check it with Desmos. It should intersect there. But this would get you the whole point is having the right Y intercept and the right code. Hayden? Um, for the number three, it says, um, it says one, would that, would the X be one over one? Like how it was in the first one? The slope, I think, is what you mean? Yeah, for that one, it would be one over one. The slope is always what's in front of the X. Thank you. You're welcome. So we can grab the X on the X. We're putting a line. Where are the X on the X? Where are the X on the X? So you're drawing the line out to the You're drawing the line from the um, Just you can put it away. Put it away until you see your grade in the grade book. Okay. 